Okay, and we are live. Let's check this thing out here. Okay, awesome. Click here anytime they're going to post on YouTube. Okay, good. All right, awesome. We're live. This is uh, my first time using this software, and uh, good. Okay, so we're live, and uh, thank you for being here. Um, my name is Marshall Wilkinson, so if you don't know me, uh, welcome to my channel. Happy uh, that you're here, or most likely you're going to be seeing this after I'm done streaming. I decided to just plug it in and stream instead of shooting a video and doing all the editing and all that. Let's just let it rip. So um, if you don't know who I am, my name is Marshall Wilkinson. I've done over $2.5 billion in, um, in contracts and construction. Excuse me, this is my guy, Brian. Business calls, man. Business always calls. Okay. So I've done $2.5 billion in construction. I'm a second-generation contractor. Um, and uh, construction, contracting, negotiation, selling. Sales, selling, negotiation. That's really what it's about. Um, contracting was just the service that we sold, right? Uh, I'm an expert in, no doubt, hands down. And so I wanted to get on here because I wanted to talk about a point that I talked about yesterday in Contractor School Live. Contractor School Live is a weekly call that I do with my dad. My dad's done $13 billion in construction. Like I said, I'm a second generation contractor and construction manager. And that call is for contractors, specifically construction and contracting game. And it doesn't matter how big or small you are. Because the, the, the tactics, strategies, and the philosophies are the same. It's just about using them in a certain manner as you scale. And um, I wanted to just shoot this video for you guys today. And for the overall public entrepreneurs, business people, salespeople, you don't just have to be a contractor. I don't want to alienate because even though my business is contracting, I am an entrepreneur, business, sales, and negotiation guy. That's what got me to $2.5 billion with a capital B. A lot of guys out here say that they're, uh, you know, sales and negotiation experts and they don't have one B. I got 2.5 of them. Um, I want to talk about, you, you guys have all heard about um, paralysis by analysis. And paralysis by analysis is really just a cop out. Dude, you're just scared. That's what it ends up being. OK, you're just scared to get out there, start the business, get revenue. You don't know how to sell. You don't want to talk to people. You're wasting time. So what you do is you focus on the stuff that's right in front of you and that nobody's going to that you don't have to interact with anybody. You focus on the spreadsheet and doing the whole thing here and getting it all set up. And it's just like the only person you're lying to is yourself. We talked about systems and infrastructure versus revenue or Paralysis by analysis versus revenue. And the number one most important thing in business is revenue. It's your customers, dude. No customer, no business. And I'll tell you from being in large organizations at the helm and C-suite levels of them that every business is dysfunctional. Okay, if you guys are taking notes, write this down. I want this to be a beneficial stream for you guys, and we're doing it live. Okay, teleprompter free. <clears throat> Revenue washes away all sins, and you're an imperfect person. And because you're an imperfect person, you're going to have an imperfect organization. You're not AT&T. You're not IBM. You haven't had a 20, 120 years in business to get the perfect Six Sigma the perfect, perfect systems in place, it's all bull, bro. It is, listen to me, and I promise you, as sure as I brush my teeth this morning, that is all bull. Now, am I saying neglect your systems, be completely inefficient on how you deliver your product or service? No, of course I'm not saying that, because that's going to erode your margins. But what I am saying is, it's a slippery slope that people use as a cop-out and as an excuse to not get in front of people, to get in front of strangers, make a presentation, make a pitch, make an offer. 
Revenue washes away all sins, okay? Um, we have a massive business, and my job is to protect the risk, contract, negotiate, and close deals. And that it, doing that allows the company to float its boat, allows everybody to get paid, allows everybody to have a lifestyle, to make money. And while that happens, it gives us opportunity to breathe while we have the business coming so we could fix systems and we could work on them and tweak them, et cetera. But even a $100 million company, I still can't find the job number. I still can't. Who's got the job number? How do we assign it? I, I still can't find the payment rack. Okay? $100 million business. You'd never believe how dysfunctional how dysfunctional, extremely profitable and extremely wealthy businesses actually are. And I'm here to tell you, and I could hear the, the MBA college professor that hasn't done anything in his life screaming right now. I'm here to tell you, it don't matter. If you're going to ask me what to focus on, Marshall, should I focus on systems and should I dial it all in or should I focus on the money? I'm going to tell you 110% focus on the money. The money's going to give you room to breathe. It's going to bring customers. Take, do not take this out of context, though. I'm not saying that get the money in the customer and then don't deliver because your systems are all screwed up. I'm not saying that. You shouldn't be in business if you can't, if you can't deliver a modicum of professionalism and deliver your product or service on time, on budget, and accurately. Then you shouldn't be in business and you're a schmuck. I'm saying if you can do that, but you're getting bogged down with spending sixty, hundred, twenty, two hundred thousand dollars on programs and software and systems and tracking and analytics and all that crazy talk, dude, crazy. Hire somebody to do all that stuff and then have them give you the data. What you need to be focused on, okay, is getting more business, more customers. Because if you got all that teed up, none of that matters if there ain't no customer. None of that matters if there is no money. And ask yourself this question, am I focused on being so internally in the business and working on systems and all this type of jazz because I'm truly afraid to get out and talk to strangers, make an offer, and close deals? I don't know the answer to that question. I know it happens a lot. You got to ask yourself that. And many times when I ask people, I know the answer is what I just said. And the only person they're lying to is themselves. They think that I don't know that they're scared to death to go out and drive revenue. So it's so much easier to just sit back behind the keyboard and figure things out like that. Okay? So I wanted to bring that message to you guys, man. Infrastructure and systems versus revenue. And I could see the comments coming in right now, and all these guys got no revenue. They're not closers. Every guy who's a business development guy who drives revenue, he's going to be right on. Wilkinson, you're totally right. Anybody who's got any money is going to be like, yeah, Wilkinson, you're totally right. The only guys that are going to be advocating for a contraction mentality of staying in the business and working on the back end and all that stuff are going to be guys that actually do that. Don't pick up the phone. Don't meet clients. Couldn't close a door. So I'm bringing this to your, uh, your attention because from somebody who's, a, who's been in very extremely wealthy and extremely robust companies and at the helm of them and has done $2.5 billion in deals – I'm here to tell you, no matter how many, 100 million, 200 million, 1 billion, 2 billion, it's all dysfunctional. None of it is perfect. So if you're chasing for a perfect organization to make the business perfect before I do X, you're chasing a ghost. I know people, family, friends, wait for the perfect thing and the perfect thing never occurs. And all of that is is a smoke screen to not pull the trigger and get out there and drive rev. If anything, I'm totally on the opposite side where I'll start driving revenue and doing pitches before I, I even got the thing done. I'm taking money pre-orders, bro. I'm ordering and then I'm going to figure out how to deliver it. Okay, I'm not going to waste my time figuring out how to deliver a product or service if I don't, if the market isn't telling me that it's willing to pay me for it. First thing I'm doing, signing up customers, getting money, and then I'm going, okay, look, Brian, we got an issue. Let's figure this out. Much rather do that with a pocket full of cash than do that to go to the marketplace and marketplace go, we don't want this solution. Get out of here, man. It's ass backwards. It's ass backwards. Okay? Infrastructure and systems versus revenue, 
100% revenue all day. All day revenue. Talked about this, um, not today, because today we did follow up, but talked about this in Power Hour um, th uh, the other day. And uh, we're focused on revenue. Everybody in Power Hour is focused on revenue. You go to Power Hour to get pumped up, to learn something new, and to train, train, train on how to close deals, how to deal with people, and how to steer outcomes in your, uh, to your best interest. That's Power Hour. It's lightning in a bottle, and it's life-changing. Revenue, revenue, revenue. Okay, what else is this buttress, what I'm talking about here? When well, I'm talking about revenue first, what else does that buttress, okay? You don't know the answer to this. I'm going to tell you. You might have an idea. I'm going to tell you. Let me just, actually, let me just do this. Let me scroll over here. I know this, I have this really robust system here. I don't know how to use it. Because like I said, this is perfect. This is indicative of exactly who I am, what you're watching right now. You're watching this probably later, not live. I just got this software and I just said, plug the thing in. Let's roll, player. Let's just pop. I have no idea how to use this thing. I just know that I'm live. It's the only thing I matter. The only thing that matters is that I'm out in the public touching you, telling you who I am, getting you to know me, showing you my competency, teleprompter free. You could obviously see Wilkinson's the real deal, right? So I don't know how to use this at all, but I think there's a feature here. I see there's a few people watching live, which is pretty cool. I wasn't expecting that at all. Um, while I'm getting texts from my guy Brian here, uh, he's got some cool stuff I got to check in on. There's stuff here. Oh, I could do this. What can I do? Oh, wait, hold on. I don't want this. I don't want this because now I could just check myself out. on the. Uh, well, that's a pretty cool thing. Oh, here we go. What is this, mate? What the heck is this? Oh, here we go. Yeah, here we go. So now I can see comments. That's cool. I'm sorry if I'm neglecting you guys. Jeez, man. What's up, Marshall? Okay, what's up, player? Uh, growing revenue fixes many of the problems, Marshall. Greed or myth? No, totally, man. That is not a myth. That is not a freaking myth, dude. I've done a tons of revenue, and it, it, has, it has saved the day in many occasions. Okay, avoidance behaviors. Totally, Jacob. I'm going to call Brian later. Okay. Live 441. Okay, cool. Great to have you guys here. Wasn't expecting it at all. So let me just circle back to what I was saying about uh, revenue first. What it does is it buttresses a 100% attitude. It, it buttresses a 100% philosophy. Okay. We're, we've been talking about it a lot in power. I, I brought it up. Uh, this is Thursday. So I brought it up on either Tuesday or Wednesday, about having a 100% philosophy, showing up 100%, doing what has to be done 100%. The attitude closes deals, man. The attitude closes deals. Dealing with people, absolutely, you got it. Totally, I'm with you, 100%. Not interested in buying today, Marshall? I'm with you totally. Most people don't buy on the first day. Most people get information. Come with me. Like, give me one second. What's your email? Sending you something right now, top of your inbox, all the information I guarantee you you're looking for. Like a 100% philosophy. If you come with a 100% philosophy, what I'm talking about, about pushing revenue, that's, the, that's always going to be the magnet that's attracting you, not the system stuff. Okay? The system stuff does matter, though. It does have a place, especially in contracting, because you got to deliver. So, you know, you do want to be efficient, because if you're inefficient, it's going to erode your margins. And if you play like we play, public works, the margins are low in the first place. You're looking for change orders and claims. You're looking for other places to pick up money because your base bid, you're really not, you know, you're lucky if you get 30 points on it. Okay. But aside from that, for the general public and for you guys, I talked about this yesterday, Contractor School Live, and I wanted to bring it to the public today to let you know that I know that what I'm saying is innate inside of you. Here's the funny thing about business. A lot of the common said stuff that you have of, of which you suppress is really the right actions. Just social and societal norms and maybe environment made you suppress them, but you know what I'm talking about. You all know that what matters most is revenue. And then some Harvard Business School professor is going to argue some other angle and stupid stuff. Guy never had a business before. He came out of school, went to work for Boston Consulting or McKinsey, making 250 right out of the gate. The guy knows nothing about starting anything and how hard it is initially to start something up. 
It's like taking a jetliner and push it, pushing it with you and your friends, you and your business. And you finally get enough speed to get the thing up in the air. Nobody knows how hard that hump is if you're not doing it. Okay, revenue is what that in, that in those initial nascent stages that is so incredibly important. And as you continue to grow and it gets more complex and you start getting sucked in and you start drinking the chalice, the poison chalice of systems and infrastructure and operations, that will sink you. You got to keep the money coming in the door. That's why all great businesses have the same things in common. All great businesses have the same things in common. They have people, tons of people. Solopreneurs are not great businesses. Great businesses have tons of people working for them because people are resources. People are tools. And if you have the tool, you will use the tool. Wouldn't you agree? People make you money. People duplicate your efforts. Okay? People allow you to put a lot more than 24 hours in one day. You know what I mean? They have people in common. The other thing they have in common is that they're constantly promoting. Great companies are always out in the marketplace looking to get attention. That is it. They want to get your attention. They spend tons of money to get your attention. And once they get your attention, it's lights on. Lights count on. Lights count on. Count on. That's what it's all about. Those are what great companies have in common. So why would you not do what a great company does? Why would you stay a solopreneur? And why would you not get out there, push and shove, and get attention in the marketplace? Success leaves clues, man. Success leaves clues. The only answer to that question is, you know what, Marshall, I'm with you, but I don't really have an idea yet. I don't have a scalable approach yet. Well, then I, then I get that. I totally, totally get that. Okay, but if you do, and you want to push this thing to the limit, and you have the time, then go for it. Like my business, my consulting business, very difficult to scale. Because as a second act in life, I'm, I have not been selling courses and masterminds and group calls. I haven't been doing that. I've been selling mainly one group call, Power Hour, but my stuff is very high ticket. And I'm selling big high ticket one-on-one. -on -one. That's only, I can't clone myself. Somebody pays me 50 grand for construction consulting. They don't want Brian. They want me, right? I can only be in one place at one time, right? Bad, very bad business model for scaling. I'll be the first one to say it. I'm, I'm allowed to admit it. It's all good. Um... So that's why the model has to change. That's why we're moving towards more group calls, live events, and um, virtual live events and courses, okay? Because that's a scalable model. So it's time to ramp up people, get out there and get attention. You know, remember, I'm one of these guys where I'm completely transparent and open. When I'm talking to you, I'm also talking to me, you know? I know about this stuff. I've done a lot of freaking business but it's like anything else. If you don't do it and you stop working out, it ain't going to be good for you. Okay? So I wanted to get that point to you guys today. Infrastructure and systems versus revenue. Revenue trumps all. Okay? And always, always, always follow what the guy, the big guys are doing. Success leaves clues. There's no shame in the game. You do not have to reinvent the wheel. You don't have enough time. The plane's got to get in the air. I don't know about you, but I got bills to pay now. I got a life to live now. I got a brand to build now. I want it now. I don't want it freaking 20 years from now where I can't use it. My teeth are falling out of my head. It's stupid. It's stupid. That is like, that is like uh, wisdom or some crap that's been passed down from, from poor people. You got it from your grandma and your granddaddy who come out of a recession and never had two shekels of nothing. The people that I know with money move fast, bro. They move fast with speed and power. My ability to make money is because I've moved fast. Ask anybody who knows me, my family, they'll tell you, Marshall's been a hustler his whole life. Marshall pulls triggers. Like, I got other people who, like, uh, won't, won't, can't move off the dime. Not me. Boom, I'm on it. Like a hornet. You won't hear from me for six months. I'm out swinging swords. Uh, it's who I am. That has made me successful. Then I get with other success, which I always thought was a downfall, by the way, for me. Because, you know, people are like, where you been? And, da, 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 da. and, you know, people will critique your families, mainly the one and, and the ones that do, that do that. And then, you know, later, once I start getting up there, I meet other guys that are players. And, they're like, and I'm like, hey, dude, you're just like me. I'm like, wow, man, I ain't alone. Thank God. This thing that they called ADHD and all that type of stuff that ended up being a freaking massive blessing. Just a, somebody tells you you got ADHD, say thank you for the blank check. I'll tell you that much. Okay, you want to be running, man. Speed, 
and quantity equal power, revenue over it all, revenue, revenue FTW, man. Okay. Awesome. Let me check out some of these comments. Really, I, I just hopped on here. I'm so surprised you guys are here, bro. Okay. Uh, paralysis analysis guys are guys who haven't gotten their teeth kicked in enough. Agreed? Yeah, yeah. They're just, you know what? I'm watching my language because it's a family show, but you know what they are. The kitty cats. The kitty cats. Dude, paralysis analysis is just an admission that there's something you don't know. It's just an admission that you don't have a competency in a thing. So you're going to hide behind a spreadsheet or something. And that's okay if that's your job. Like if your job is, hey, this is the spreadsheet guy. He's the operations guy. He never comes close to touching clients. And that's okay. Just know that your income will be capped. And you will always be used as a tool and a resource to get to provide a solution or to, to drive revenue or to help revenue growing for somebody else. They're going to benefit from your work. And in exchange, you're going you're gonna to be trading your abilities and that work for dollars. Okay. Manuel, how you doing, man? Vasquez, hustler. You got that right, player. You're your own franchise. Everyone wants you. That's cool, man. That's cool. I like that. Okay, this is cool, man. I click this thing. This is good. This is a good little thing. Okay. All right, so uh, how long have we been live? 20 minutes. That's enough. This, vi this video don't got to be longer than that. 21 minutes. Great seeing you guys. Appreciate you guys being here. I'm going to continue to pop on and do these lives. I feel like they're so much better than shooting a video and editing the video and all that stuff. I got a sick 8K camera right here. This thing is nasty. I got all the – my whole office is a studio. Uh, by the way, that's the George Washington Bridge behind me. You see that? Let me see. Can I see it? Yeah, right there. That's the George Washington Bridge. I'm on the other side of the Hudson. I'm here in Fort Lee, New Jersey, but I'm New York all day from New York. You know that. Sitting up here in a high rise looking over the Hudson. Life is pretty good. Okay, guys. Thanks for being here. If you had, had never heard of me, you just stumbled on this video. Somehow I got lucky. The algorithm put my stuff in the side and you clicked on it for some reason. I appreciate you being here. I promise you, you, you are in the right place. There are other people out there that you can listen to. I promise you, whatever they say, I already know and will tell you. And I will tell you better things and hit it at better angles. And I'm actually a bona fide guy. So happy to have you here. And uh, subscribe, man. Subscribe and hit the like button. Help me out, okay? Help me move off of certain other uh, platforms and do my thing here and make this as robust as possible. All right, guys. Have a great one. We see how to end this thing, man. Boom.